Hey there, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to another review for another film that quite a few people have asked me about, and it's called Accident Man. Based on, a, I think, a comic or a comic strip, which I had never heard of. And it's directed by this guy who, I guess he worked on stunts and such in films like Mission Impossible 3, Terminator 3, Charlie's Angels. And he's directed a couple of films. He directed The Butcher with Eric Roberts, which I haven't seen. The Package was told with Steve Austin and Dolph Lundgren, which I thought was alright, fairly decent. And he's coming out with a new film, I don't know when, I, I'm guessing this year, called Triple Threat, which I look forward to because it has Tony Jaw and the guy from The Raid Redemption, Iko Uwais, which I saw a film recently called Headshot he was in, which was pretty damn good too. So it stars those two guys, and you have Michael John White and Sky Atkins in the movie too, so... And considering this guy directed, who did a pretty damn good job with this, I'm very curious about it. Pretty damn curious about it. Uh, I look forward to that. So when people ask me, what's a film I look forward to? John with three, and you can put triple threat on the, on the list there. The other guy, Tiger Chin, I'm not sure who he is. He might have been something that I, I don't, I just don't, can't think of it. But the end of this film, this has a fairly decent cast too. It stars Scott Atkins, who I like Scott Atkins. I've been really liking a lot of his stuff. I loved Ninja 2, Shadow of a Tear. Really enjoyed that movie. I think it's one of the best directed video action films in a good long while. I don't know what the best would be, but definitely one of the best in my opinion. Just for just straightforward 80 minutes of ass kicking, well done choreography action simple plot really like ninja shadow of a tear I haven't seen close range although I thought it looked pretty good I like undisputed 2 and undisputed 3 I haven't seen undisputed 4 maybe one day whenever I do the undisputed films which I don't know when but I've really grown the light Scott Atkins and I thought he did a really good job and unlike Elaine Moosey in those new tip box movies, I think Scott Atkins is a fairly decent actor. Especially in this film, he's pretty good. He's not that bad in the acting. He's really not. And he's really good martial artist as well. Unlike Elaine Moosey, who's good at the martial arts, but I think he, he's a vacuum of presence or acting in those new tip box movies. Scott Atkins, though, I like Michael Jai White and Ray Park, the guy who played Darth Maul in The Phantom Menace, Toad from X-Men. He was in Snake Eyes in the G.I. Joe movies. Ray Park and Michael Jai White are a team of Special Forces guys who work together. You have this big guy who kills people with an axe. Amy Johnston, I think is her name. She's this woman who is an army brat, and she was trained by this Ronin who she killed, and she has this uh, pretty damn good fight with Scott Atkins at the end. Some fists to toss and some with sword, a sword. You have Ray Stevenson, who I thought actually did a decent job, because I did not like his Punisher movie. I did not like him in the role. But here I thought he, it worked well. He's sort of the guy who owns this bar that the assassins go to. And he's the guy who trained and taught Scott Atkins what he knew. David Paymer, he's been in a lot of flicks. He was in was it Carpool with Tom Arnold. He was in, what was it? I think he was in City, Sl yeah, City Slickers or Billy Crystal. He's, he's one of those guys, if you look at it, I recognize that guy. He's been in quite a few films. And the gist of the story is this group of assassins, including Scott Atkins, and they're stone cold killers. One day he gets a call from the lover of his ex-girlfriend, who left him not for a man, but for a woman. And Michael Jai White has a fun line where he goes, Man, you must really pissed her off. She, she, she switched teens on a motherfucker. So her girlfriend's lesbian lover, calls her and says she's dead. Oh, by the way, she was pregnant with your kid that you didn't know about. And for Scott Atkins, this was the person, the, really the only person he truly cared about, so he wants answers, and he tries to go find what the fuck happened. 
And yeah, there's that part of your brain that goes, well, wait a minute, you know, he's a stone cold killer, he's an assassin, he kills innocent people, should I really give a shit about his plight, boo-hoo, you're no saint, I'm sure you've murdered many innocent people too. It's not like an assassin who just kills the guilty parties. So it's like, should I give a shit about this guy? Or should I give a shit about this character's plight? So I guess that's like one eh, about it. But if you if I bypass that and just go with this movie, which is has a bit of a sense of humor to it at times. It's not meant to be taken 100% seriously. It's just meant for fun. And some pretty damn good fight scenes. It's an entertaining movie. I think Sky Atkins does a good job. Interesting idea with his assassin. He makes things look like an accident. So like one guy, he makes it look like a suicide by hanging. There's another guy later on. He shoots the tire and makes a, this car swerve to hit and crush another guy. To make it look like the tire blew out. And this assassin crushed this poor guy who was his target. Interesting. Movie moved at a pretty decent pace. I never really got bored with it. Again, there's some good sense of humor. Like the sort of colorful characters of assassins, the again the act killer guy who's a hitman. There's one guy called Poison Pete. Uh, the Soldiers of Fortune, Michael J. White and Ray Park. It was kind of cool. That it's like Spawn and Snake Eyes are a team. <laughs> I thought that was kind of cool. Uh, I thought those two worked pretty well together. <coughs> Ray Park at one point goes, if my aunt had bullets, she'd be my uncle. And Michael Jai White, I, just the way he says his line, what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> so I thought they worked well together. Uh, Amy Johnston, who's called Jane the Ripper, you have this other guy who makes these crazy inventions. Including later on, he makes these bandages, which Scott Atkins finds, and is actually called Atkins Bandage. A nod to his real name. So the the first chunk of the movie, they're showing this world of these assassins and what he does, hence why the movie's called Accident Man. He makes these look like an accident. At one point, he fries this death metal band, the type of... And you hear narration from Scott Atkins going, uh, I don't know why, you know, we're not told why we're supposed to kill. We're just given a target. He's like, I don't know, maybe it's because of the shitty music. After three songs... After hear what, what was it? I, after hearing three songs, I would have killed him for free. Which again, this part is like, should I really care about this character? Should this character really be likable? <laughs> but again, I guess I had fun with the rest of the movie that I overlooked that. Which, another movie could be a big point of contention for me, but at the end of the day, I want a movie to entertain, and the movie did entertain. So I'm like, okay, it's based on a comic, it's not meant to be taken 100% seriously. I'll go with it, movie. And I was being, I was having fun being entertained. So, uh, you get some really good fights uh, early on in the film for, quote, a post-murder tension relief. He goes in a bar and fights these guys, breaks arms, breaks legs. Uh, there's another guy who tries to kill him. And he kicks the guy with both of his feet, kicks this guy off a motorcycle, and he's taunting the guy and whipping this guy's ass, and then you know, gets under, breaks his neck. I thought that was a fun scene. That's Then he gets word of his ex-girlfriend. I, yeah, I thought that was sort of a little different touch, that his girlfriend left for another girl and not just another guy. This is uh, trying to piece together what happened. You get a fantastic fight scene, in my opinion, where he confronts Michael Jaiwa and Ray Park, and they go, yeah, we did it, but it's just part of the job, and we were told what to do. You're no saint either. It goes on for quite a long time, but unlike, say, the end fight of Kipbotch Retaliation, which was just so fucking goofy and stupid, to, to be fucking pulp fiction needle to the heart and stuff. 
just watch my review of that if you want to know what the hell I'm talking about. Chip Boss Retaliation. I, after Chip Boss Retaliation, this was a breath of fresh air while those Chip Boss reboots was a breath of fresh ass. But getting back to this, there's a fight between Scott Atkins, Michael J. White, and Ray Park, which is fucking fantastic. Whipping, you know, back and forth, whipping ass. Just, I don't want to go into all the details. I don't want to spoil it. It's a damn good fight. Him versus these two guys. Doesn't kill him, but, you know, whips their ass. Because, like, okay, yeah, they pulled the trigger, but he's got to find someone who put, quote, the gun into their hands, who hired them. And then we get a bit of a flashback to when he was a kid and he was a paper boy who was beat up by these guys and he followed Ray Stevenson and he's like, I followed you because you're a killer, a hired killer and I want to be taught because I want to get the guys who are beating me up. And we see him, the lead bully, pushes him off this, the railing of this building and we see him being taught and... That's why, like, Ray Stevenson, he's kind of a, becomes a father figure to him, kind of. He meets with his ex-girlfriend's lover, and she's giving him a bunch of bullshit. Although, you know, he's a hired assassin. She doesn't know this yet, but... And then, Scott Atkins gets in a fight with the axe guy, which I thought was a fairly decent fight. Uh, the bit that I thought was funny about that was the guy snaps out of it after he's been stabbed with his own axe. It's like, oh, hey, man, how's it going? He didn't even realize Scott Atkins was there. He's like, you know, when I did, and I'm just there in the zone. And he wasn't there to kill Scott Atkins. He was there to kill the other girl. And it's something to do with his... Scott Atkins' ex-girlfriend was an environmentalist, and this, the whole gist of the the why, I didn't really find that interesting. It's kind of like, whatever, something to do with the oil tycoons, and exposition wasn't really that interesting, to be honest. I think this is one of those movies, if you don't enter for the plot, you're not getting much out of it. But it was a fairly decent pace, some... Fun, colorful characters, some pretty damn decent fight scenes, some nice sense of sense of humor at times. You know, fights and kills the axe guy, meets with David Paymer, tortures him, gets info. He beats some guys in this massage parlor as well. He meets one guy, gets shot up by. Michael J. White and Ray Park. Again, decent fights. Gets Ray Park, who b -b 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 uses him as a shield. Which I thought would look pretty nice. Kind of a weak, I guess, death of Michael J. White, but maybe not. Because he takes Michael J. White out by shooting some fire extinguisher stuff in his face. And then off screen hitting him with a fire extinguisher. And I'm like, that's how you kill him off? That's really weak. Just an off screen hit with a fire extinguisher. But then when you listen when I listen to the dialogue and I think he was talking to Ray Steves and he's talking about how, you know, the team that was sent to kill him. Michael J. Weiss don't have to live with killing his buddy. So I guess he didn't kill Michael J. White. I guess that's why. And I'm like, I don't know why he didn't kill Michael J. White or why they left him alive. Because you never see him again throughout the rest of the movie. So I, I, I don't know. I thought that was kind of weird. I don't know what the deal is with that. It can't be, oh, he doesn't want to get killed off. He got killed off by Tony John skin trade, which I thought was pretty, pretty good scene in a pretty good fight. Kills this one guy, Poison Pete, stabs him in the throat, uh, gets in, goes to this other person's place, gets a, I thought a really nice fight with Amy Johnston. Nice back and forth. 
stabs her with a sword. I thought that was a really good fight too. I'm not going to get all the details of the fight to spoil that for folks. Well, by this point, I'm spoiling the movie, so there you go. But that's how I do reviews. I'm sure, it's just spoilers at the beginning, but oh well. Although you do get some weird, some dumb stuff as well. For example, a line Amy Johnson says is when she pulls her sword out, she goes, I guess it's time to butter the toast. Maybe I'll let you lick the knife. I'm like, this line can lick my ass. This is a, that's a shitty line. Also, after killing her, he cuts the, the main guy who hired everything, cuts his head off and spurts blood. And the spurting blood ends with like this fart noise of the last CGI spurt of blood. As the body's fallen, this last spurt of blood, literally it's a fart noise. A and it's shitty CGI looking blood. Like, you didn't need that. Come on. And these, like, that shitty line and that bit easily could be fixed with editing. Just cut that line out, cut that stupid part. Just, he cuts the head off, boom. You didn't need the CGI blood and fucking fart noise at the end of that bit. And then the final shot, it's a little bit, I don't know if I want to say anticlimactic, because goes to the bar, there's Ray Stevens and David Paymer. Realize that David Paymer was part of it. Ray Stevens beats the fuck out of David Paymer. The guy who makes these inventions. Scott Adams didn't kill, he just knocked out, but took his bandages thing. Gives it to David Payment. David Payment puts the bandages on, and I guess some kind of poison gets in the system and kills him. And then Scott is Ray Stevens didn't have some choice words, and he's like, you know, I should kill you. Ray Stevens says it's Scott Atkins, but, you know, just get the fuck out of my bar. And he does. And then he rides off on a motorcycle, and I'm thinking, by the dialogue, is he going to become a superhero? Is he going to become a vigilante? Is he going to use it for good? I don't know where he's going, but is this a movie they want to make a franchise? Kind of like, I swear that Michael J. White film Falcon Rising, it seemed, which I, I liked OT as well. It seemed like maybe they wanted to make that a franchise as well, but it didn't happen. And I doubt this is getting a sequel either, so I don't know if they're, they want to make sequels to this. I mean, I wouldn't say this film's on par with recent action films I saw. Like, I would pit, I'd probably put Mayhem with Steven Yeun above this. I would definitely put Headshot with the, I can never say his last name, Eco Ways, the guy for the Ray Redemption. I would put that above this. But I thought this was a pretty decent film. I, I liked it. I, like I said, mood at a fairly decent pace, has some nice bits of humor I like, some dialogue bits, or like the axe guy with an, oh, I didn't see you there, I didn't know that was you. Some pretty good fight scenes, I like Scott Atkins as the lead. I think if you're a fan of Scott Atkins, it's well worth a look. I do have my nitpicks, again, sort of the Kill by just not kill a Michael J. Weiss character. Shitty line by Amy Johnston. That CGI fart burst of blood from the headless guy at the end. Again, is it really? Should we, I really care about this lead guy when he's willing to kill people that could very well be innocent? It's just, hey, it's a job. <clears throat> But I guess, you know, that's like with a lot of movies dealing with assassins. So I guess if you handle those movies, you can handle it in this movie. Overall, though, I liked the film. I was entertained by the film. It was, like I say, it was a breath of fresh air compared to Kip Botcher Vengeance and Kip Botcher Retaliation, which I saw recently, too. But either way, thanks for watching. Take care. 
and we will see you later. Bye-bye.